we're going to want to start with gathering all our materials, starting with one to two newspapers depending on your class size. You may also want to use a pair of scissors for cutting up the paper strips, although they're not required, they do make the process look much more uniform. The strips that we're creating are so that our blender or food processor, depending on what you're using at home, does not end up breaking. In the case of a smaller machine, you should be using smaller strips about half an inch wide. Large machines, you can go as large as one inch wide. And remember, all these newspapers should preferably be recycled. Go ahead and get yourself a large container that's able to fit both newspapers in it. What you're going to want to do is once the strips are complete, you'll be placing the strips in this container filled with warm water and allow them to soak overnight. It's also possible to do this using hot water and allowing the newspaper to soak in it for several hours before you begin the project. Make sure you keep turning the newspaper over as it soaks. Next, grab your blender or food processor. In our case, we're using one that is very small, so we're going to have to do this in several batches. Take at least two containers, and as an optional step, you can lay out washcloths to help absorb the extra moisture. Grab your blender and start filling it with the soaked newspaper. As you blend it, pour it out into the container. From here on out, our steps are going to vary slightly from yours. What you should be doing at this point is taking the goldenrod flowers or the staghorn sumac flowers that you've gathered, breaking them up and adding them into the mixture as you begin to blend it. This will help create a very informal way of dyeing it. In our case though, our materials weren't available to us, but keeping in mind our focus on locality and sustainability, and still wanting to achieve that goal of ultimately dyeing the seed paper, we decided to use the last of the cherries that were in season. So in our case, we're going to go ahead and have, then pit the cherries, and blend them up with some water to create a juice that we'll use for the dyes. But in your case, again, you'd want to use those special flowers you've collected from your field harvest at this point and include them in the blending mixture. Now go ahead and strain out any excess water from the newspaper pulp. You can begin adding it back to that original container you were using to have it soak overnight. And if you haven't already done so, like in our case, we're going to add our dyes separately. And at this point, you're going to want to stick both hands inside of the pulp. You're going to want to mash everything together really nicely. You're going to want to mix it as best as you can, just in case the blender missed anything. After that, you're going to want each participant to take about a handful of the mixture squeegee some of the excess water out. You're going to want to leave some of the moisture in there to make sure that the pulp does not fall apart as they mold it. And from here on out, participants can begin making and pressing the pulp into whatever shape they'd like. Obviously, the thicker that they leave their pulp paper, the longer it will take for it to dry. For best and fastest results, we recommend creating a very thin piece of seed paper. However, you are more than welcome to create more creative and unique pieces, such as a pizza slice or a fish. Of course, seed paper wouldn't be seed paper without any seeds from the outside world. After hearing from artists from the Vermont Abenaki Artists Association, we ventured out to the University of Vermont's Butterfly Garden, hoping to see if we could find any milkweed or flower seeds that would be of interest. In your case, we highly recommend you venture out to your riparian zone that you will have spent the past few days learning about and seeing what seeds are available to gather there. With your seed selection already made, it's time to head back inside the classroom. Carefully separate the seeds from any flowers or plants that you've gathered and begin to gently press them into the newspaper pulp. As a measure of extra security, you may choose to add an additional layer of pulp over the seeds to make sure that when they're dry, they don't blow away. At this point, allow your seed paper to dry at least over the course of one night, if not two, depending on its thickness. From there on out, it's your choice of where to plant it and begin your first steps in conservation.